welcome everyone to another awesome day of FileMaker training. I'm going to press a button here. I am Richard Carlton. Today is going to be more of a basic training day for those of you wondering about this kind of stuff. And I'm not picking on you if this is a content that's new to you. Glad we're here. Margaret's here. We got, uh, who else is here? Michael Music is here. He uh, was whining he had nothing to do and now he's starting to get lots of coaching customers. So the guy that we're going to be talking to today is a FileMaker coach. He's also intimately involved with FM Starting Point Lite. Uh, he's very, very involved with that conversion process of getting that done. We're having to simplify the product quite a bit, the new starting point, and that will be the starting point light and the standard version. Today is, is an exciting uh, topic. Let's just cover the upcoming broadcast schedule real quick. Um, I always like it when we have a lot of great people here and a lot of comments. So here's what we have. Uh, today's Coach's Corner, we're going to be talking about multi-page invoices. And it's kind of, when you learn FileMic, you kind of learn one thing and then you see, you kind of have to rethink um, unnaturally about how you build reports and stuff and how you build maybe an invoice, which is an interesting thing. Um, and that's what today's about. Tomorrow is going to be a really good day. Tomorrow is kind of more, I kind of advanced a little bit, I would think, because we're talking about FileMaker Server and the latest bugs and patches and fixes and things that you need to be aware of. There's, there's been some security fixes for Apache, which affects Linux and Mac, and apparently Claris' guidance on this changed on Friday. Today's like beginning basics, and then it gets progressively more complex till you get to Friday when your head will explode. So, uh, moving along. Uh, Michael, are you there? Are you Yes, there? sir. What are we doing today? When you want to show people your face real quick, not show your screen, show your sure. face. Sure. They know who you are? That's not Michael. That's not Michael. That's Michael. This is Michael. Oh, I'm I got to click the button over there. There we go. There's Michael right there. And Michael's Hello. awesome. He's wearing his FM TV shirt. He's so sexy and good looking, and he's oh, available. Side. That side. There you go. You got to go the right That's way. The yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, take a, right Michael, let's get into it today. Uh, we go. greatly appreciate it. So show your screen. Let's get into this. So here is the issue. Let's go ahead and open um, starting point lights. So we're going to talk about this real quick, and then we're going to kind of do some construction. Uh, so I'm going to go full screen over here. So this is starting point light. This is basically the light one here. We have the standard one over here. These are the 2020 editions, not the 2022 one, because the 2022 one is not quite far enough yet. So here is the deal with multi-page invoices. So go to, um, go to, let's go to invoices for a moment. And so let's start off with how life originally worked in the old days. In the old days, we were in FileMaker. We walked eight miles in the snow. We were using FileMaker 2 or 3 or 5 or whatever. You would build a layout like this. And the first thing that people, and you wouldn't have stuff over here. And then you, the first thing you would do is that, actually most of this stuff would be at the bottom. You would take a layout that you were on and you would print it, right? So that was your, your data entry screen and your print version. But then people realize you have all this navigation up here, things like that. So what they do is they build a separate print version. So if you could pop a new window for me and show us the print version of this layout would be really swell. Not print, but actually show me the layout. So, so we're gonna do this invoices and print. Yeah. Single page. Yeah. So this was the standard thing. Now, the reason I, I like talking about this real quick is that if you go, go and go to layout mode here and layout mode here, what you're going to see is something that kind of, you see it in browse mode. You see how it looks in browse mode or in layout mode? It looks the same as basically in browse mode. So when you're like this, you see it. I, I love it when you have a solution. And it's why I hate excessively comp complex solutions is that you want to be in layout mode. You want to be able to make a change and it immediately affects how it looks in browse mode, which is kind of how it prints. This is a big deal for beginning FileMaker developers. The advanced people like Kyle and Nick and whatnot don't remember this because they don't remember that far back in their lives where they were beginning developers. But as a beginning developer, I deal with a lot of folks who get confused by this. Being able to see this and then going to browse mode, go to browse mode, and this part will kind of go way over here, but go to browse mode, it really kind of looks like it, right? It didn't radically change. So I always thought that this was awesome. The problem is that if you scroll down, can I move the window up and kind of scroll down a little bit? So we get to this issue where we have X number of lines in here. And so the rub is you get into an invoice where you, instead of having 20 here or however many there are, you have 50 or 60 or something like that. And so you need to do a multi-page invoice. And so we've shot videos on this, but we're bringing this back up today so you folks can ask questions. Um, yeah, 
I already uh, kind of uh, brought that up, Margaret. Yeah. So uh, okay, yeah, I'm okay. paying attention to, to Twitch. Um, the issue is that um, you really need the, the here's go to layout mode for me for a moment. So here's the deal with FileMaker, and this is just kind of a fundamental. Okay, so uh, over here we have this entire body part, right, which basically is one page, okay? Um, now pop a new window and show me list view. Would that be, that would be really great. New window, let's just take, go back to like uh, the list view on invoices, right? Not that, no. Oh, on invoices, I see. Go to, uh, yeah, go to invoices, go to like a list, there we go, number 80, okay, well, go down the list view list view and layout mode would be great there we go so the difference here is that if you take all these out of the way here in fact just do me a favor and just click on these if you see me click on that and delete it just click on that and delete it I'm gonna simplify this now one at a time delete okay so just bang those out for me leave the body get rid of the sub summaries for me so at its most simplest level what FileMaker is really good at doing is putting page breaks when body parts occur when there's a break in the body part, Claris FileMaker is really good at providing a page break. So, um, and this gets into this issue with contracts. And so, um, J1 Marcus was asking a question. And so, if you can slide this just right a little bit so I can see the other one, um, I need to see both together. This, Sorry, I need both I of got them. Just a slight delay. Sorry about that. Okay. I need both of them. There we go. All right. There we go. So, here's the deal with this is that if you ask Claris to do a page break in the middle of a body part that's really big like this, or any body part, it doesn't do it well, if at all, okay? It's just going to chop it, and you get what you get. In order to have a beautiful break on the page and have it break in a reasonable sort of way, you have to have small, digestible chunks of body parts. And so what we end up doing is that we end up building an invoice where the header, so basically we should assume that thing, everything up here and above is the header, everything down, and it could be a header or a top nav, some other stuff. Once again, that's irrelevant to the conversation. This all could be the header up here for all practical purposes. This right here is essentially the footer. So this is going to be on the page once at the top. This will be on the page once at the bottom. And this thing in the middle gets repeated as many times as it can because we have room on the page. Over here, we've kind of pre-built it, so it doesn't matter what happens is that when you get to the bottom, you're done, right? And so if you have more lines in here or not, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and so this is easy to understand, but it has pretty specific limitations. And so what you end up doing is you have to get this mode. Nick has talked about this. Um, Nick has talked about this with some of his contracts, and he had some very advanced uh, topics. We're covering it at a very basic level. But the idea is that... If you uh, if you if go over here, go to browse mode, and then uh, hit Command U for preview would be great. So what we're going to get on a Command U, as in uniform. There we go. So move it over here so we can see it. So this is representing how it will look on a piece of paper if it were to print. And once again, if we scroll down a little bit to the bottom. You will see where you get to a point where it's it gets to the next body, 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 body. It gets to the bottom. It can't fit another one, so it just kicks it down to the next side. If you flip this button right here and go to the next page, you're going to end up seeing how nicely at the top it picks up the conversation. And so this is what you have to kind of wrap your head around. So what we did, and it's start it's in the standard version as a starting point. And the light one we kind of removed it because we wanted to keep it as basic as possible. Go ahead and close this for the moment, and let's open up the standard version of starting point here. It would be great. Let's go to the invoices, and um, and so go, let's go ahead and go to uh, the layout. Let's display the layouts. We'll show them what we built over here. This is really educational. What we did is, if you go to invoices and hold here, I'll get this out of the way, you're going to see that we have a single page. So what we did is that because we really wanted this to still be as simple as possible, we, ran, we run a calculation when we print that says, hey, if it's less than X number of lines, we're just going to use this one layout here. Okay. And however, uh, the equivalent layout that's over here, right? Th this layout is over here. But we also had this multi-page modern capability. So once you hit uh, 810 here, click, click on that, 810. And, uh, and let's go to, uh, so the, now 
perfect hold right here so the header is here the footer it actually right here so don't move Michael okay headers there the footer related components are down here this part here gets repeated so what instead of this being um, you know you got related records here every record is a body right that flips for if you have 10 records in your found set this is what you're gonna have right here right 10 records that rep, rep, uh, that replicate down the page over here because it's through a relationship you'd have 10 so you'd have one two three all in a portal right but if you had the 30 this thing only shows 16 so say you have 20 so you have 20 over here you're gonna get 20 records and it will break at the appropriate spot on this one over here if you have 20 you're screwed you can't see it right makes sense and so the idea is that where when we print here we're in the invoices and we're seeing the related line items here when we print over on this version over here it says oh you've got more than 16 what we're gonna do is we're going to jump to a layout that is actually based upon the layout line item. So if you look right here, we are based upon the base table here is a layout line item. So every record here is a line item. So here on this invoice, we have one record and there's say 20 related records. Here, we, we, we jump from the parent to the child set of records. So there's 20 records here. And each of those 20 is the body parts here, right? So th this, this will rep rep indicate 20 different uh, records all the way down the page to 20. Okay, makes sense the trick was is for people to understand that the header and the footer have to come from the parent invoice record over here so this is the parent and then these guys down here are, are the 20 children right and so the header comes from this up here as you'll notice all these are through a relationship right through a relationship so uh, t12 invoices yeah, so here it's through relationship, and over here it is local. These fields are all local, right? Makes sense? Questions about that? Yeah, Dave is talking about the body parts, and I for this conversation, I don't particularly care about that because um, largely these will either display at the top only and or at the bottom only. And what I care that people need to understand is that this is the part that repeats, and then what you have is a break in here somewhere, you have a break in here somewhere, and then it, it will break cleanly at that point. So your header would be on page one, and your footer would be on the last page, whatever the, the, the bottom of the last page or the, the last page somewhere. So that is the trick with this. So breaking, having breaks across the body here has historically been a giant pain for Claris to program. Um, it's easy for them to program it where it literally cuts lines in half and cuts objects in half kind of historically that's the way it works so uh, Marcus there is, is is chatting about that uh, about kind of how that kind of sucks well in order for you to build a contract and have it break nicely you have to have a header part of the contract you have a footer part of the contract then the paragraphs or, or sections of the contract need to be uh, records that repeat now the problem is is that you can get kind of weird breaks because it'll break at the bottom or the top of the record, if the record is huge, you could have pages that maybe are only half full or two-thirds full, things like that. Um, it won't be quite as clean. Can you go over here and take a look what kind of, uh, if you go to, in, uh, let's take a look and find an invoice that has a bunch of records in it. Let's see. Invoices, data entry, browse mode. All right. Can you do me a favor and flip this, uh, this version of starting point to basic for me? So go to preferences and switch it over, oh, over yeah. here. Yeah, go here, go to prefer and set it to basic because it's on stupid right now. It's on basic. Okay, just that's fine. Then go to dashboard and then hit invoices. Do it manually like that. There we go. Much simpler. All right, we need an invoice with a bunch of records. So can you give me a whole bunch of records and start creating them for me? I need like at least 20. So what he's doing here, even though these all look the same, they are different related records. So how many do we have now about? How about a little over 20. 22, okay, 22. so what we want to do is we want to turn on the script debugger and step through the printing process on this. So the script debugger on. We're going to step through the printing process of printing this. So we have a, somewhere we have probably, a, yeah, there's a print button there. We're going to press that. And so we're going to step through this a little bit and watch what happens. <clears throat> 
Okay, so it's going to set a value, set a variable. Okay, here's the comments right here. Oh, go back up. So here, I, I we made the notes. This, this came out in starting point 4.7. It's been around for a while. We talk about multi-pages. Can only handle 16 items per page. We kind of figured that out. So what we do is that if there's more than 16 records, um, we're going to bounce. So keep going. That's that's a QuickBooks trigger there. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, okay. So you have QuickBooks enabled somehow, so you need to probably turn that off. I don't know why. You of all people, more of our junior staff, don't know anything about QuickBooks, right? So I have no idea why that would be on for you. Maybe you're lonely or bored looking for something new. I mean, if I want to like, <laughs> I would rather chew on tinfoil than deal with QuickBooks. Matt's saying something, but yeah. All right, so here we go. We're going to step through. Hopefully it'll get through this time. Keep going. There we go. Okay. All right, so now it, it's determined. So it it, it realizes there's more than 16 records, right? Is that what's going on? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what we have to do is we come down here, and we're going to jump to the related line item. So go ahead and step through. Okay. Okay, it's going to jump to GTRR. Now what we have done is we've jumped to. Now we have 24, we're on the, we're on the child uh, table here, and we have 24 related records, right? So these are the ones that he created, okay? So keep stepping, step again. Okay, we're going to go ahead and exit the script, or keep going. Uh, we don't have any barcode stuff going, keep going. Let's see what else we have. Those were the other options that we had, keep going. And then we might have a, uh, keep going, I'm just waiting here. It does a page setup, a generic page setup that we have for 8.5 by 11. So it's one of the trips, tips and starting point. Is you can set up a standard 8.5 by 11 upright in one spot, and then all the print jobs kind of reference the same kind of thing right here. So go ahead and keep going. It'll come back. Um, it's not going to save as PDF, else, right, whatever. It's going to jump to the bottom. Keep going. And then it's going to execute a print job. So go ahead and stop right here. If you want to just go ahead and cancel, just cancel and stop the script at right this point will be fine. The essential parts of what we have, go ahead and go to preview mode right here, over here. So once again, you don't see all the headers and stuff frequently. Um, there we go. So now you go on preview mode, it displays the headers. And now go ahead and scroll to the bottom. And you get to a nice clean break, wherever that would be, we don't really care. And then you go to page two. And then you have... Uh, and then it, what it printed like, oh, there's like four of them, five of them, eight of them here. And then, you know, formatting and whatnot, it puts the bottom half of the invoice down here. Okay. The short version is that it prints this job. And then once it's done, uh, it's going to kind of go back to where it was. Right. And so this is how you solve the problem. And this is how, how Nick, uh, you know, solves, you know, like well, contracts. Like say you have contract, a section here. Scott Kane's got a big flooring solution. I'm sure this stuff is all over there. Section here, section here, section here. So you actually end up building records that you need to display, and they can be variable height. What's interesting about this, go to, uh, can you uh, go to look back to layout mode over here? This is a really a fun one. Go to layout mode. You can actually have variable height body parts. So grab the body over here and make it uh, taller. Uh, just make that, yeah, go down, 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 yeah. So now extend, grab these, uh, well, grab this one for sure, this one, this one right here, and make it taller down to the bottom, uh, right, yeah, area like that. Now go back to browse mode for me. And uh, so why don't you grab uh, some blocks of text and put them in a couple of these. Yeah, here we go, baby. Just type a bunch of uh, space, okay, whatever. That's fine, okay, something like that, okay. Now, do a, another one down here somewhere. So notice that bra that the body parts don't auto uh, configure in browse mode, but in preview mode, still preview still gives you some things that you can't normally see. So let's go back to command. So you're, we're going to go back and forth, browse layout preview mode. So Michael, we're not going to leave this layout. So right now, this looks like it's because it's not really auto sizing. So we want to fix that. So let's go to the layout mode. Yeah, Stu points out we need variable height on body parts someday in browse mode. That would be great. So what we want to do is uh, we have to find this. I haven't looked at this in a while, but you go down to slide it, visibility and sliding or wherever that was at. Where'd that go? Visibility and sliding. You were, was it in there? I was just on it. Uh, there it is. Yeah. So you want to move up 
uh, click on this, click on that, move up. Uh, and you want to check this box right here. It says also enclose the uh, uh, resize the enclosing part. Okay. So let's try this. I always get these two mixed up right here. So what I know is that it will do this. It's either this one or this one here because they're not in my mind like really clear. And it hasn't been clear since I used this in FileMaker 2, which is where this was at. That's how old this shit is. So go back to browse mode. Let's take a look at browse mode. You'll notice that nothing happens. It will be the same. Oh, it did. Uh, uh, preview it. So you have to be like the dramatic effect, right? So so here it's not here. Then if we go preview mode, will it look good? Drum roll. Except all of you know the answer already. Alright, so go to preview. Now. There we go. Alright, so that's how you have the, the body parts. So what you do is you create a body part over here, and you set it to really jumbo fat, and then you have it auto resize, so then it has you have variable height uh, components. The problem is is that for beginning users um, is that uh, if you go to layout mode over here if you go to layout mode over here this one over here looks like the invoice this one over here kind of doesn't look like the invoice it kind of looks like the invoice and kind of parts of it look like an invoice but parts of it don't make any sense that's because it makes no sense right so what you see is what you get that WYSIWYG idea from like 1912 you know, the very first Mac with Apple and Steve Jobs and that whole thing and the, and the proportional fonts and this sort of thing. What you see is what you get. This is what you see, what you get. This is what you what you see is not what you get. For, and in a training environment, I hate that. I really do. So, but it's something that if you want to get better with FileMaker and do more cool things, you have to get your head wrapped around this idea. But Margaret's asking David what the script was again. I mean, I guess we can go through it again. Uh, why don't we go back over here to... Uh, the, the data entry screen in browse mode, and we will do a print, uh, print job again. All right, so yeah, gonna... I think he's talking about the first line of that specific print script. Well, we will, see, we will see. Record. All right, let's stop. First line. Oh, it's okay. It's just executing the, uh, the script of script 1251. Okay, go ahead. So that allow user board off, so air capture on. So the first line here is to commit the record. So if the user is in here, uh, clicking and editing we want to commit them out because we need them out of there because we're going to jump around and we could if we pop a new window which i'm likely to do uh and, you know popping a window is part of a process you can end up locking yourself out of the record so frequently i i will execute a commit first just to stop uh any it's a pre it's a mayhem prevention it's like those commercials where you see the mayhem guy and he's like people are crashing their cars and shit i love those commercials are great commercials so this is a mayhem prevention device all state insurance right here, baby. You turn this on and it helps prevent mayhem. This right here, allow user abort, uh, turns off so the user can't abort this process. Users tend to, if they hit command period and stop it, they can stop in a weird spot. They don't understand. Uh, error capture on. Once again, this is not a. This does not tell you it's capturing errors. All this is is suppressing default FileMaker error dialogs. So that's an uh, error dialog suppression is on. Once again. We talked about that during our certification test quite a bit. All right, go ahead and step through. So that's that. Then uh, we're going to set a local variable param for whatever we passed. I don't know what we passed it. We must have passed something. Can you check the data viewer and see what we passed? Data viewer dollar per. Uh, it was empty. Must have been empty. I don't see any. It should have defined a variable there, but it's not there. Okay. Once again, these are global variables here, so a local variable would be either right there or right there wherever it's at, but it's not here at all, which means it's a null, literally a null value, so it didn't do anything. All right, keep going. So the next one down is we're going to have to widen this out. Can you widen this out so we can read the if statements here, Chief? So we're not doing that. Scroll down. Ah, here's the next line down here. So if your related record count, and so what we're doing is we're having it count uh, a count will add up uh, add up a related value ID constants where we put a number one in each field so it's adding up either every record is one because there's nothing that says give me the total uh, give me the total number of related records I don't believe that's a get function at least it didn't used to be and so what this does effectively gives us a count in here of the total related records to that relationship and if it's more than 16 and we have this other flag over here can you make that wider? We'll see what that flag says. Flag. Is it the kind of... 
Yeah, so we have two different kinds of invoices at starting point. We have a modern and a basic invoice because uh, people had a style aesthetic, so we put two of them in there to give them an idea that they could have more than one style. So it's going to choose its uh, modern or whatever. It's going to come down here. It's going to go to the multi-page uh, invoice, right? Uh, so keep going down. Go ahead and execute Oops. another line or two. Uh, and there we go. So it jumps into the multi-page here. Keep going down. Pretty straightforward. Once again, we have another script parameter moment. I don't know if it's actually setting anything. Uh, for use if saving a PDF. Okay. So um, obviously we're not doing that. Then it says, are we doing modern? Yes or no? Go ahead and go down. It looks like we are using modern. So it jumps to a layout, uh, which is an on-record load. If the barcode is missing, but I don't think we're using the barcode stuff, so hit go down. It exits, right? So uh, once again, we're using uh, the barcode software is not enabled on this thing. Stu says, do you determine how many body lines can hold or will FileMaker handle it automatically? Uh, well, it's you're, you're, okay, so Stu, they're related records. So go ahead and, uh, go ahead and uh, just finish out or get us out of this screen. Uh, Michael, I'm going to address Stu's question here. So uh, because they're related records, it doesn't matter if it's uh, if five related records or 5,000 related records. Um, you keep going because we, we haven't capped it at all, right? Because we're creating um, – can you, can you come over here and scroll down? Scroll down over here so we can see this. You can scroll down the bottom we keep oh, my things in here out of the way you keep adding new ones in here and keep going forever right there's no limit to that right and because it's multi-page it goes forever it's fine i mean i guess there's some sort of practical limit you know a ream of paper or something um if you, if you uh 16 why, why can't uh break Uh, okay, so 16 a page is arbitrary for us because we only had that much room with a font size selection. When we, we, what we did is we built this over here. We like this design aesthetic. If you chopped out this, got rid of some of this, maybe you could put 18 or 19 or 20 in here. If you get rid of this, which has a barcode or something, and you get rid of these things, you can maybe put more. 16 is arbitrary. It's just what we came up with in our case. In, in no way would I tell you that that's correct or right. It just is what our free solution is. If you really needed a company that only would do 10 or do 20, you could adjust the size, the font spacing in here to do that. So um, why does Claris not break properly across the body part? Um, I don't know. This has been a bitch since I've come to the community. I don't think it's simple for them to write logic to determine how to break across. A lot of times you, you have printing in here. It'll, it'll break right across the middle of a line of, of text. Like you have a paragraph of text in here. Like, you know, the gray, gray brown frocks jumped over the orange kitty, blah, 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 blah. It'll break right across the middle of text. And people have complained about that for years. Um, it's it's something that's not within their realm to fix easily or logically. You, it's just you're, you're, you're not going to get that fixed. Uh, good question. There's a symbol, record number, placing the footer, don't know. It's a multi-page. What it is. Uh, I think it was because he, well, he added Stu's questions. He said, do you need to determine how many body lines one page can hold? And David David said, there's a symbol named record number placed in the footer. Don't there's know what happens with the multi-page. Uh, well, there's the page number there. So this, this calculates at the time you do a, a save as a PDF or you do a print job of whatever type, right? It's going to – what it does is FileMaker builds all this out and then fills these in as it figures them out, right? inserts the current date, current uh, page number. Uh, there's a symbol record number you could place in the footer. Yeah, I don't entirely understand Stu's question. Do you de do you determine how many records or will FileMaker? Yeah, uh, no, okay, so oh, oh, I understand the question. We printed them until we figured out how many could fit without it uh, breaking down, if that makes sense. So initially it was over, we built this over here and um, and then at the time, it was not this really fat body here. It was a really narrow one. And we tested it and printed till we got to 17. 17 would cause it to chop off. So then we just programmed to the 16 at that point. Uh, but why do you even need to do that? Because you uh, – I don't know. That's a good question. I guess you could – I mean, Stu, you're asking how to how, – basically the script, if we run the script, the script either is going to print the basic layout here 
or our script will print the multi-page layout here. We, let, we left both in the system for training and simplicity purposes, right, Stu? So there's the one right here, which is simpler for people to comprehend. But as a, like if you're Kyle or a more established developer, maybe like yourself, Stu, then maybe all you need is this one right here, right? But in our case, at starting point, it's also a training tool. So we wanted to keep it simple as possible. But then if people got crazy and added many, many, many lines, uh, then we wanted to be able to handle that. But in starting point light, we didn't put this in. We removed this because this is, listen, we're having a conversation here. We're having a conversation because this ain't simple, okay? It's not simple. If it was simple, we wouldn't be having a conversation, right? So uh, it's like an M4. If an M4 was so easy to clean or your 416 was so easy to clean, you wouldn't have a class or to get a detailed discussion about how that goes, right? But no, there is because it ain't that simple, right? So you have to tear this stuff apart and look at it and make a determination. So we let, so in, a, in an ideal world, you could technically remove this, keep this one, but then people would only be exposed to that one way of printing. And for brand new, brand new people, that's a harder jump, right? Uh, I see it allows you to use either layout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that's what we did. It's, I'm, I'm sorry. A lot of things I do with starting point. Starting point is FM starting point, not FM done. And and I've had this conversation with a number of people. Some of you are here. You're like, well, how come it doesn't do this? Not come to do this because it's not done. And it's not done because what you need in your business will be different than what someone else needs in their business. And I try to get it as close as I can for everyone to have a good launching point, a platform to launch off of. But it's not the end of the road. It's just kind of really to get you over the hump of the stupid stuff that you you know, you shouldn't have to do. It's a starting point, and we need basic beginning people to be able to start with this. And so your starting point can't be horrifically complex. So that's why we've taken the neomorphism. You want to show them what you're working on? Uh, yeah. Yeah, show them where you're at with light so that you get the idea. So those of you, so this is for Rick Fosnot and a couple people who have been wondering, like, what's going on. Because uh, we've kind of covered this topic specifically well. we got 15 minutes left. Why don't we talk about... Where we're at with starting point 22, light. So this is it here. We don't have the chart on here. I don't know if the chart will make it or not. It doesn't really matter. So what you've done, the contacts, you've done invoices. What have you done? Yeah, basically we're working on uh, – we start working on the contacts. So that's mostly mostly done. But um, we've kind of eliminated some of the things that, that were difficult. For instance, you couldn't um, – you couldn't do easy searches. The next thing we did was we took we took away the side navigation here. Um, that the hamburger menu, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the hamburger menu navigation, and we moved it up here to the top just so it's it's a little bit easier to read, easier to understand where you are in context of the app. Um, things like I that. I have had one person or two. I've had one person tell me, oh, they really like this, and they're a very advanced developer. They like the hamburger menu. So, it's very slick, but it's just a little complicated. Yeah. So. Um, so that's, that's pretty much what we did. We just kind of tried to consolidate some things. We moved some stuff around, kind of put put the right fields and, and the right modules. Um, just generally tried to make it a little simpler for a, a novice to understand. Yeah, yeah, which is a primary uh, goal. Uh, what we're doing is we're, we got this kind of this alternate team of people that's kind of coming in behind to make uh, the simple, simplified version that, that any file maker, if I drop this in front of any, FileMaker person who's a mid-level or higher, they'll be able to understand what's going on with this, which is the goal. Um, it really is the goal to go to layout mode and to be able to explore what you see is what you get, right? That, that was the issue we did over here with the invoicing, the printing, right? It was what you saw, what you got with a one page and with a multi-page, it's a little bit eh, not as easy, right? And, uh, and so the goal is that if you go to layout mode right now, like go to layout mode, it makes sense. Like the sh** that was there in browse mode is still there in layout mode. And it's like, oh, okay, there's a portal, and here's a field, and you know, and you say, oh, I got merge fields in here. That's fine. But you got this other thing down here. You know, it, it, it that's part of this training, starting point training thing that we do. Um, it's so important that um, you don't feel because otherwise you discourage people, you de demoralize them. Like when I email Rick and said, hey, I have no idea how this goes. I'm sure Rick was like, well damn that sucks and i feel bad and am i not smart enough or is nick too smart or you know it, it causes all sorts of you know issues right when you want to be able to tell people yes there's no reason you can't tell someone yes 
The goal is that in business, if you're able to say yes, that's good for business. Whenever you tell people no, you run the risk of the person saying, F you, I'm going to go look at another product. I have a big, we, we collectively, because you folks are part of this too, we have a big responsibility to make sure that when we present FileMaker to people, we don't make it look too stupidly complex. If we do, that can alienate and antagonize them. Um, it's, it's, it's a tip that I would give Kyle. So I'm going to talk to Kyle real quick. Kyle's there. Kyle, when Kyle goes and gets in front of people, he should not be trying to explain how brilliant he is to other people, okay? Because pretty much they've already established that he's a kind of a smart guy. You don't want to intimidate people to the point where they don't want to use your shit because they, they figure that, well, Kyle's brilliant, and this is so complicated that only Kyle can do this, so therefore why should we use it internally, right? If you make yourself so indispensable, you potentially run yourself out of business, right? It's not a place I, I want to be. I want p other people to feel that they can do, they can make successful CRMs and be successful with this product, right? Um, and it doesn't require a Nick or a Kyle or someone else, right? That they can be empowered to do that. If they get stuck down the road, I'm happy to sell them that, some time to, you know, get them over that hurdle, that hump. That's fine. But I want them to be able to get a basic solution going without any exterior involvement, right? I, I, I think that's best for the community. It's best for everyone involved, right? So, yeah. So, I mean, I like Kyle. I pick on him, though, because Kyle gets in a room, and the first thing he wants to do is show everyone how brilliant he is. And I try to explain this to Kyle. And if you're someone else out there and you're in this part of this group, I'm talking to you. It's not so much how brilliant you are. It's how you can help the person you're talking to, right? It's how you can help them, right? If, if Stu shows up to help, however that might be, it's not how great Stu is. Oh, Stu is so brilliant. Oh, my God. And he can, you know, and he you know, went to ranger school and this and that. Um, the point is, though, is that it's, it's how Stu can help someone and how Stu's team can help someone. If, you're there, if they're talking to you, they want to know how you can help them today, now. All right. Um, anyway, moving along. Uh, uh, Margaret, anything else we have? What are we uh, talking about the upcoming schedule here? Tomorrow is server day. So about servers, bug fixes, things like that. Yep. Do we have more? Uh, there we go. Yeah, no, I'm there. I'm checking to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Um, oh, Psychonaut is taking his certi certification exam tomorrow. Who is? Who is? Psychonaut. Psychonaut? Psychonaut. How come? Okay, Psychonaut, how long have you been here and you're like, are, are a different call sign? Are you new to YouTube or does I've never noticed you before, right? Because I, I normally recognize I feel like people. I've seen that name before, but I don't think they talk very much. Okay. ML Core. He wants to figure out about the ML Core on FileMaker. I haven't used it too much, mostly because we don't have, you know, this happened, listen, you do, you've been doing this, obviously I'm an old, I'm old and over the hill, right? And there's like a lot of 20 year olds and stuff out there doing cool stuff with FileMaker. But I've been around long enough to see kind of a pattern. So technology comes out with something amazing. Like when FileMaker Go, FileMaker Go came out in 2010, thereabouts, 2010, 2009, 2010, came out. And I thought it was a game-changing kind of thing. I thought it was most amazing shit ever. I was the guy who helped bring uh, JFile which was a little flat file database system to the Palm Pilot and have it connect to FileMaker. I was one of the guys who did that, right? I brought product to market and did all that kind of stuff. And so I believed in the mobile devices. So FileMaker Go comes out in 2010. I did. I paid money. We set up conferences and road shows at hotels. I mean, we instead of putting money in this, it was really before you know a lot of live stream video. We did all these in-person events. And people are like, wow, that's really amazing. And then you're like waiting for the, them to engage because they're businesses and they have field people, right? Field service people. And they're, they'd be like, ah, that's really amazing. And then they turn around and walk out. And I'm like, right? And so what happened was is that people's brains could see it, but they hadn't embraced it yet. So they understood it. It was this tech. It was great. It was wonderful. It was going to change their world. But it was like maybe someday or whatever, right? And so there was no immediate engagement. It took years, years before there were some significant numbers of people spending money to make sure that they could use FileMaker on an iPad, um, mostly. iPhone somewhat to a limited degree, so, so small. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the same thing is with machine language, machine learning. If you wonder why I get off on it, what I'm doing is I'm drawing a parallel for you on this. Machine learning is a big deal. I think it'll be a big deal. I think that no one knows really how to make it really help their business 
kind of like they don't understand how to make an iPad helpful for their business, and therefore they're not doing it. And therefore, no one pays me to do it, which means that I don't have any relevant experience to show you. So it's kind of like a chicken or the egg, right? Where does that come from? Machine learning is like uh, a major new technology, and it's been around for a while, but when will people embrace it? I don't know. When there's some sort of amazing thing that comes out that really helps them save time or money, right? For me, but I, I'm still on the young side of the FileMaker community, and that's like, eh, right? So... That's why we're trying to reach out. Mar By the way, as a side note, we're working on a curriculum and we're coming out with um, a different way of writing the curriculum. I mean, it'll still be written um, and it'll be available in blogs and various things like that. But we're writing this curriculum, but the, instead of analogies of like folders and files, folders are like having, you know, like folders. So the Rolodex, remember the Rolodex? You turn the right? Some of us remember that stuff. The 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds have no idea what we're talking about at all. Zero. They have no clue about that. So Margaret and I have been working on different analogies to try to explain to them the idea of organizing data and why that's a good thing and you know for people who work on their phones all day. Trying to explain to, to a 25 year old why they need FileMaker. I mean say a 25 year old starts a business right or involved with a business somehow they're in a business and they're disorganized because they're using post-it notes and probably Excel because that's still kind of this default thing. But they know that Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook doesn't really solve the business problem, right? But they don't know the right way of solving it. So our goal is to communicate with them in a meaningful way, which is different than how you communicate with a 50, 60-year-old or 70-year-old or 80-year-old if you're in the case of Larry. Oh, wait a minute. Larry's not that old. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Anyway, so tomorrow's going to be server day. I appreciate everyone there. All right, well, that's it for today. Uh, we'll... we'll Good schedule coming up. Lots of exciting stuff, uh, all the way up to crazy Nick level stuff. Appreciate the Michael uh, Van Cranenberg. Do I say that right? I just call him Michael Music, right? Michael, are you there? Can you show your That's face? That's right. Still here. Michael so Van if you're looking for a FileMaker coach who's intimately involved with the new design of the new stuff, that's him right here. Um, that's him. He's uh, doing the. He's doing the uh, Nick translation to human readable uh, content, so we greatly appreciate that. And so when so when we, people ask me where is the new starting point at, I have to go to him and the three people that he's working with and ask them, like, hey, where's it at? You guys working on it? So there we go. All right, that's it for today. Email, send us a uh, question, send us an email to support RC Consulting, question, comments. All right, see you. potentially expired look at the back of that car right there looks like the filemaker license has expired sir i need you to step out of the vehicle sir sir step out of the vehicle sir